Well, good evening. Thank you for being here at the Blue Point Bible Church. This is our sixth annual Bible conference, and I do want to thank each and every one of you for taking some time out of your evening to join us. Prayerfully, you'll consider joining us throughout the entire weekend, as many of you have a folder. If you do not have a folder, um, please see me as I step down, and I, I'll make my way to the back. If you need a folder, I'll keep an eye out. Just wave a hand at me, and I'll make sure you get one. Um, the folder is full of a couple different things. You have a, um, a paper that gives you the agenda for the conference. You have some information about the Power of Preterism Network, which I serve as the director of, and you also have a Second Peter Chapter 1 growth chart, which you'll hear more about as we go throughout the weekend. You also have a couple pieces of paper because it's a Bible conference, and I would hope that you take notes, and you go back to your hotels, your rooms, your home, and you begin to study some of the things you may hear this evening. I'd just like to give a couple of in-house announcements before I tell you a little bit more about our goal of the conference and um, bring us right into a prayer and the rest of the details. So we have bathrooms. One is as soon as you go out of the sanctuary and you make a left and hold I'm already wanting to apologize for saying the word sanctuary. Um, however, here, this is what we call our sanctuary. Um, you go out into the foyer, you make a left, and you'll see the bathroom at the other end of the hallway, or if that one's full, you can go upstairs and just kind of follow the stairs up, and I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find the bathroom. It's the room after the library. Um, we have refreshments available free of charge in the, in the fellowship room right across the hall. Uh, there's water, soda, chips, cupcakes. I saw a bunch of other neat boxes that I didn't get a chance to uh, decide what was in there and if I wanted to eat it. But I do, of course, invite you all to uh, make your way to the back if you feel uh, you're hungry or you need something to eat. Please help yourselves. Um, I did want to take a moment to introduce our elders and our deacons here at the church. Um, and of course, thanking everybody here at the church for all that they've done to make this happen, to make this a reality. So, uh, and if you may stand, if I say your name, please just stand and give a wave and uh, everybody will know who you are. So the first person I'd like to introduce is Pastor Steve Schilling here from Blue Point Bible Church. Um, that's Pastor Steve. Um, the next person I'd like to introduce is Deacon Ed Silsby. And I'd like to introduce Deacon Brian Johnston. All right. um, again, I've already mentioned the conference folder, and I'll introduce our speakers here in a moment. What I'd like to do is start out by mentioning two Bible verses, two verses that you will, well, not verses, two passages that you'll hear throughout the weekend if you enter into conversation with me. There are two verses that I regularly bring up that I believe it's important for Christians to consider at the beginning of anything that we do. The first one is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, where it tells us the goal of our instruction is this, love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Prayerfully, that has gone before each and every one of us as we showed up here this evening. The next text is a little longer than that, and it's found in 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'd like to just start at verse 2 and read through to verse 9. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence, in your faith supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. And if I may just move into verse 10, and then I'll conclude. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. Let's open in a word of prayer. Mighty God, we have trusted that you have gone before us this evening, that you are already found all throughout this weekend in your sovereignty and in your providence, Lord. We trust that you've readied our speakers with great messages that will edify us, that will glorify you above all things, Lord, and that your presence will be known, felt, and experienced here this weekend. 
Lord, we thank you for all that you've done to provide the goal of our instruction. We thank you for the beautiful fruits of the Spirit, the beautiful attributes that we are called to increase in and grow in and possess, Lord, that you would be seen through your people. Lord, make your presence known here tonight to each person that is here and as well as those that may be blessed by our time spent here, Lord. We thank you for everything you've provided. We pray for our speakers, that they will be given the words that glorify you, that they will be given peace of mind, and of course, for each of us who are listening, edification. Lord, our conference is to you. What's next is your glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So I'd like to just bring us through the conference outline. And instead of coming up here after each speaker and saying a bunch of things, I'd rather just have an organic flow of the conference. So if I can have you pull out that paper in your folder. Tonight, I'm not going to go through the whole, the whole thing. I'm just going to give you the precursor to this evening. Um, our first speaker is going to be Mr. Ward Fenley. And instead of spending a lot of time talking about Ward, I will let him introduce himself. However, I would let you know that Ward is the author of The Second Coming of Jesus Christ Has Already Happened, which you can purchase in the hallway. I know it's available free of charge if you do not have a donation to give. However, if you do have a donation of any amount, I'm sure Ward would appreciate that. Ward directs, leads, and has founded the New Creation Ministries International. Um, of course, you could visit his website, which I believe is ncmi.tv. TV. TV. Thank you. And uh, Ward has been a friend. He's uh, definitely a pioneer in preterism, and I know we will be blessed by him. Mr. Holger Neubauer will follow. And again, I won't come up to bring you up. I just trust that you'll follow Ward. Um, Holger's been a blessing. Holger is the preacher at Lakeshore Church of Christ in South Haven, Michigan. And uh, Holger's been a blessing. Many of the people here at the church know that Holger's been a blessing to me. Uh, many of you may have seen uh, presentations, debates that have been done by Holger. And I know and I trust that each of you will be blessed by what he brings forth this evening. Then we will go into a 15-minute break, which is the perfect time to go ahead and grab some of those cupcakes mm -hmm. and everything else that's found in that fellowship room. And then we will have a game show, uh, Jeopardy! Trivia with Herman and Nudix, our resident uh, comedians for our conference every year. And then instead of a video from Larry Siegel, I will be coming up and I will be sharing some thoughts that Larry Siegel from Fulfilled Dynamics has expressed in regards to what's next with the preterism. I'll be sharing some of his thoughts. He does apologize that he was not able to be with us, nor was he able to put together the video that he had desired. And then we will have closing remarks and our closing prayer for the evening. I want to make mention of Saturday just because I believe it to be important. Um, we're going to have a forum tomorrow morning from, if you look in the bulletin, from 12 to 1. And it's going to be a time where those of you that are sitting here, if, you know, and those of you that are preachers that are not a part of our agenda, um, maybe you're not a preacher, maybe you're a Christian that has a firm conviction and you feel that other people may, may need to hear that. And um, we will have a time where we will open up for that. I do ask you to see me prior to us scheduling you to speak for that exhortation. But we will have a time where we will open up for 15 minutes um, from those of you that are here that may not be signed up as a speaker, but may feel that you have something to bring forth that would bless and edify each one of us. So please see me at the end of this evening to let me know that you'd like to be a part of that tomorrow at 12 p.m. Following the time of short exhortations and announcements, you will also have, by the way, not just an exhortation, if you have announcements um, in regards to what's happening with preterism, what may be happening with your local church, we would like to hear about that. So that would be a t that 12 p.m. would be a time for that as well. And then following that, we're going to have lunch in the basement. We have uh, fried chicken from Five Brothers in Patrick. If you haven't had it yet, you need to stay for lunch. And uh, sorry, Holger, I know you won't be here, but it's good chicken. We'll get you there. All right, hey, we might have to make that happen. And um, also, we will have a basket auction in the basement. Uh, we do ask for a $5 donation to our missions, and um, then you'll be able to have your baskets. You can put in a little ticket for each basket, and we have quite a few baskets that have been put together um, for gifts for many of you, uh, the winner. And dinner will be on our own at tomorrow evening at the time that I said I wasn't going to get into tomorrow. Um, you can look in your agenda, you'll see it there. We're gonna to go to dinner on our own tomorrow evening. So what's next? 
what's next. The goal of this conference, as you see, is to talk about what's next. And really what we're doing is we're examining, there's a big history of this view called preterism. And I'm of the view that the preterist view of prophecy as highlighted through the contextual teachings of Jesus Christ and his apostles never perished. It's been here. It's been found in the church. It's just never been highlighted the way that we're seeing it highlighted in this generation. Although other schools of interpretation have come and gone, preterism has always remained. Its reemergence as a grassroots movement is being seen all over the globe. I might encourage you in your own time to visit Preterist Archive where you can learn more about how the church fathers, many of them, had what we would call preterist leanings and understood aspects of fulfillment. And then also there's a great writing that I would like to make mention of called The Road Back to Preterism. If you're not very clear with the history and why has preterism been missing in church history, and I'm not going into defining preterism because I believe our speakers will probably do so, um, the goal is to see what's next. If we agree with preterism, if we've seen the power of what preterism has brought forth, um, the wisdom that is found within it, the faithfulness and the mercy of God that is exemplified through understanding preterism. Um, that's what we're going to be talking about this weekend. We're going to be honoring men such as Max King, Don Preston, and many others who have put forth much work in this generation to make this truth known. And I believe that it's important for us to, now I've been a preterist since 2010, and I've seen many variances, I've seen differences, I've seen divisiveness, I've seen great great things as well, strengths and unity and the blessing of meeting brothers beyond denominations and um, I've seen depressing moments, I've seen many things within preterism. So I wonder and I say, what is next? What is next for this preterist movement that I truly believe and I believe many of you believe God is behind? So with that said, I'd like to invite Sister Meredith to bless us in song at the opening of our evening today and then Ward, I will ask you to follow Sister Meredith's song. Pastor, did you take a pa an extra piece of paper with you? Sorry. The bottom piece of paper that was up here? I did. <laughs> I'm guessing you'll need that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mm. Okay, <laughs> new microphone. <laughs> you know, I just want to say that um, back in March, I was Googling Christian music, uh, Christi Christian lyrics for a very beloved uh, tune and um, came across this version. And I said to the pastor, you know, this is all about reunification and uh, renewal and um, just unity in the church. And uh, he says, that'd be great. That'd be great. So. <sighs> Lord of the church, we pray for our renewing. Christ over all our undivided aim. Fire of the Spirit, burn for and Word of the Spirit, fan the living flame. We turn to Christ amid our fear and failing. Filled with the Holy Spirit, 
Over all the 